munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to an introduction video into my rescue. So for those of you who are new here, hello, my name is Munchie and I run a foster based rescue for hamsters, gerbils and mice. And today's intake story is a very special one that I hope you guys will appreciate because unfortunately we have a bit of an emergency dilemma that I will probably be announcing at the end of this video. So I'll walk you through it and then tell you a surprise which may or may not be great depending on you and what you think is a nice surprise. So this intake is a whole bunch of ho oh boys. <laughs> <laughs> Today we have intaken two Roborowski hamsters named Mary and Pippin. We don't know what their previous names were, so we came up with Mary and Pippin, and thanks to our volunteer transporter up north of us, she was able to safely rescue these hamsters and then get them down to us where they are now in our care and are being watched and quarantined until they are able to be put up for adoption. So these guys actually I have found on Craigslist, and I reached out via my rescue saying, hey, hello, I am so-and-so, I'm contacting you from my rescue today. I noticed these are kind of an emergency ASAP need gone right away. Would you be willing to surrender them into our care? If not, and you're looking for an actual home that they can go into, just keep us as a backup because a lot of the times people do want them to go directly into a home rather than say a foster based rescue like us where a lot of people they get the wrong impressions for rescues and it makes me sad so I let people know what to do and or to use us as a backup. And she was telling me, oh yes, that'd be great. When can you come by? We're not able to go down to meet you there because I did mention the location, but these guys were just very nice and pleasant to talk to. And so I just sent them over to my transporter who was in their area and she was able to get them safely from them. It was a good interaction, good time talking. But the reason why these two Roborowski hamsters were surrendered to us today was because they unfortunately caused an allergic reaction in her boyfriend. But before I introduce the hamsters to you guys, I do wanna show you what my volunteer transporter gave me that they gave her. Now these guys came with two cages, we do not know exactly if they were housed separately or together, but upon transporting them into our care, our rescue, that the owner actually gave them to our transporter in a box together. So they came together. So this would be our first pairing of dwarf hamsters. Now we let our fans and viewers know and supporters know on Instagram that we do not really like it when hamsters are paired. People want to go out and seek paired hamsters. But when we get paired hamsters that have been together for a while not causing any issues we will be willing to keep them but when people go and seek them is when we're like hey whoa wait because one they have to be the same litter two they have to be introduced at a very young age three they need to be the same genders please same genders because their gestation period is 22 to 30 days for Roborowski. So they're a bit different than Syrian hamsters, which is naturally at about 16 days for pregnancy because Roboroskis are actually one of the oldest living hamster because they can live up to four years. It's really crazy when you hear that versus like a Syrian that they have such a short amount of life, especially pet stores. I don't believe we knew exactly where they came from. We don't believe they're from the same litter because one looks a little bit older than the other. And so maybe we thought that maybe they were paired together, but let me show you what they came with. First off, exercise balls. And I always like talking about them because I wanna give people my opinion as well as I just want to like you guys know there's better options out there. So exercise balls. These things get very dirty as you can see because they've been rolling around for a while. This used to be a lot clearer and if you because I could see some ew oh god I can't see pee in this one and I'm touching it too. Okay you probably can't see but there is pee stains in there. If you're not constantly cleaning this out every time you use it, it builds up in there and it's disgusting. So yeah, this is a used ball. It's not a clean ball. So that makes me a little bit irritated that they would hand off a dirty item. When people like to rehome, they either leave them dirty and filthy, like the uh, moldy bedding, if you guys remember that video of the six hamster intake, that was fun. So they either leave them clean or they leave them dirty for you to handle. But anyways, exercise balls, they can get their 
claws or their fingers trapped in here, the paws. And so I don't really like using them. I used to use them a lot and I've had no accidents when I've used them, but I just like open play areas a lot better. Free roaming is what I like to say. So it's best to get a play pin. I just created kind of like, um, it's a shelving unit. It's a clear shelving unit that I have zip tied together to make my own little play pin. And then you can have in there covered bottom so that none of your floors get damaged. Or you can actually have like, for instance, a fleece blanket in there, something that covers the floor so they can walk around on it and just create your own play area. Now, if you were to use balls like this, 15 to 20 minutes is usually average. Uh, max is around 30 minutes for your very active ones. And I only have a few exercise balls that I am keeping in case of emergencies where when we had a lot of Syrian hamsters, I cannot physically at my rescue take them out to have their own playtime. You really should have playtime outside of their cage for Syrian hamsters, but unfortunately I just hit myself in the nose with this. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. It's, it's fun. It's okay. It's distracting. Never mind. Sorry guys. I just realized that might be distracting for my video because I'm playing around with it, but I still have some in case I can't get to everybody's needs because there's a difference between a rescue and rescues housing and their situation versus personal care. A lot of people are getting rescues and personal care mixed up. And when seeing my videos for the first time, people are then alerted and alarmed saying, hey, why don't you do this? When it's either we do do this, you just don't see us doing it or don't hear about us doing it because we express ourselves elsewhere not always on YouTube, we mention a lot of stuff on Instagram too, or we don't do this because we don't have enough time, we are a rescue that has intakes and then rehomes, and so we have a lot of animals coming in and leaving, and so we don't have enough time for personal care. So there is a difference. But anyways, those I don't really like, but I will hold on to a few of them, but just have personalized play pins. Much easier. Much better for them too. The worst food to be feeding your hamsters because they are not a hay-based diet, they are a protein-based diet, is hamster gerbil food from Oxbow. Terrible. This stuff sucks. Please do not feed them. I've been getting a bunch of Roboroskis with these bags for some reason. These are not good. The number one ingredient in here is Timothy meal or Timothy hay. Do not purchase Oxbow. I made a whole video about it. They're garbage for hamster food, but they don't miss the mark on anything else besides hamster and gerbils. So good job Oxbow for providing other species of animals with the correct care and nutrition. Just you suck at hamster and gerbil. Next, we have some Tiny Tails tubes here that we can reuse. These are really great, especially when we get in mice because we like to create tunnel systems for mice. They love it so much, as well as Roboroskis and dwarf hamsters do like them, but it also depends on the hamster as well. So a lot of the times our mice like to use them and I'm just kind of putting them all together here. Look at me, and they're actually very easy to get on. Ooh, this one's dirty. Gosh dang it, ah, I just noticed that. Oh wait, that's a KT. <gasps> Guys, oh, I made a discovery. Look at that. You see that? That's a KT that it can fit onto a Tiny Tails um, brace. Oh God, what is this called again? Oh no, I'm going blank, but you know what I mean. It could fit, but you see the difference in size and quality. KT is so much smaller than Tiny Tails tubes. Tiny Tails gives you room. However, with the KTs on the inside, it wraps around in here, as you can see, and it has good traction. Whereas if um, you were to position, say for instance, tubes like this, it's very steep on the inside. So unless your hamster has bedding piled up in there, they're gonna be whoop, sliding down and or not wanting to go down. That's why I do not like it when I see the tiny tails being wrapped around really funky like, because they're trying to make it so they don't just have a complete drop. But some of them do in the tiny tails cages, they just do a complete drop. And they're so steep, they can't grab anything. They don't have any traction. And so that's why KT tubes are better when it comes to traction and trying to climb up and down, whereas Tiny Tails is better for bigger hammies. But I still don't give Tiny Tails tubes to even Syrians. I don't put them in there. I actually get PVC pipe to give to Syrians, so I don't let them touch that. That's only for dwarves and for mice. Now next, we have a Living World really tiny bell bottle here. I don't think I wanna be using this. This doesn't look so great. And so it's just a very small amount of water in that water bottle and we have better ones. So I'll be getting rid of it. I will not keep it. 
and then we do have what looks like, let's see, it says Sam, small animal module, pen plaques incorporated, made in Thailand. I don't know what this is from, but it sucks. Oh my gosh, uh, 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 no, thank you, uh, uh. It's dirty too, so it came from an enclosure and or an attachment to an enclosure. That was in there, and then we have a pink Hot Wheels track. Why? Why is that in there? And then we have a wooden robot head, which this actually reminds me of these things that I used to play with when I was probably growing up. Until eight years of age, there was these really cool blocks at my school where when it was playtime, because it was always Friday, it was playtime. You can just have a bunch of time to play. Thank you school for having that. I don't know if other people's schools had that, but you had like an hour or like an hour and a half or something like that where you can just do whatever you want. It's playtime, get on the computers, play some cool games, play Oregon Trail, Amazon Trail. Oh my gosh, all the fun stuff. Oh, it was just so much fun back then. But there was kind of blocks like these. Don't use woods you don't know of that has paint that they shouldn't be digesting. Don't, just don't, don't, this is bad, throw it away. Ugh, why is it in there? And then we have another tube here. We have what looks like might be a KT. Let me see, I see writing on it. It says, Pen Plaques Incorporated. I, what is this from? I need to look this up. And or leave comments down below if you know where it's from. And then we have, which maybe you will find out the theme of one of their cages. We have this that also has one of these attachments here. Ooh, ooh, don't break. There we go, one of these attachments, as you can see right here. This is, this is not supposed to be here, but apparently it works. This actually works. How about that? Oh, this has traction in here too. Ah, oh, this might be a good tube. Oh, it's dirty. It's dirty right there. Oh gosh, can you guys, can you see it's dirty? Oh, all these things I'm touching, don't worry, I sanitize afterwards when I touch these things. But another one of these. And then the first cage, which is the most frustrating cage. I actually tried putting this together and I couldn't put it together and there was a few things missing. So I might actually be making a bad cage review in the future of this one. But yes, as you heard me, it is a bad cage and it is the Habit Trail Space Station for hamsters. What the Sam heck is this? Oh my God. What is this crap you see before me? Why are they being blasted off into Mother Evan space? Well, yeah, right here, right here, it shows you all these really cool things. Like this, for instance, you crawl all the way up here and you're just blasting off in a rocket ship. Oh my gosh. I'm not trying to make fun of kids. I know these things appeal to kids because they are for kids. I get it. But these should be toys, not living creatures. Please do not be getting your child out there a living thing unless you understand you, the parent, are responsible for that animal. Your child cannot be responsible if they are very young. They should not have responsibility over a hamster and you should understand that if given a child an uh, animal, that they treat it as a toy, that is a bad move. That is not how you make a person have responsibility they will not learn it that way do not do that please understand if your child wants an animal they need to understand responsibility they need to understand feeding they need to understand taking care of it taking it out it's it's not like a cat or a dog when it comes to these small animals there is more routines with small animals than you realize with a cat or a dog and cats and dogs are way different than small animals people think small animals are gonna be easier no they are not once you do your research you understand a little bit more about how these guys actually act the way they are, how to get used to them, all that. They are so much more responsibility than you could ever imagine. And I really wish parents would realize that. Please, if you are to get an animal, do not force it in something like this because of the design of it, but because it is the correct space requirements. Not any gizmos or gadgets appealing to humans, but hamsters they are going to live into these because that is what meets their needs. Do not do not, do not, just do not. Please understand that I am really fed up with companies that are just catering to people, not to the animal of which they claim they love and support and are caring for. This is caring for you. Anyways, so I couldn't put this one together. I couldn't put the base together, I couldn't put any of this together, and it came with no instructions. And I tried. I tried my gosh darn hardest to put this together, and it frustrated me. This might be the worst cage, worser 
Worser, which is not even a word. Worse than the Tiny Tails rocket ship. And I am saying that as somebody who avidly, avidly, gosh, am I making it worse today? Avidly. Tiny Tails of which I advocate to hate. Advocate to hate? Is that a better word for it? I don't know. Words today. Where are they going? I just don't know. It's bad. And I really wanted to show you what it looked like set up, but I couldn't build it. But what I did build was a very old, I believe this is from the 90s, guys, which is so bizarre that they had a hamster in this. This is an older version of the Tiny Tails Critter Trail. You might think it looks just the same as one of them you see in store, but it's way different. And on the screen, I'll probably show you a comparison between the now KT Critter Trail of this type and this Critter Trail of this type. This is old and even the Super Pet Critter Trail sticker is old. Look at that. It's nostalgic. Maybe I should keep this. I was thinking about throwing it out. I think I think I want to throw it out because I use these as travel carriers, but this is so ancient, old, and unsafe that I don't like it. But look, this pan is bigger in depth than the original KT that's on the market now. But yeah, it's just, it's so old. I don't know where these guys got this from, but just, just look at it. The latching compartment is so insecure. Like when I put this on, it, it just is this big chunk right here and I had to get it on exactly and it's just so weird and just look at it. Sorry if I was facing it off camera, but look. And I wanna show you the wheel because that also gives it away that it is an old cage. And this wheel is probably why they redesigned it because it's dangerous. It is so dangerous, so dangerous that it is a disgrace. It really is. I mean, look at this, what? And it's noisy too. Do you see there's something wrong with this wheel, right? Like this wheel, the size of it, is a lot bigger than some of their wheels that they have on the market now. I haven't measured it yet. You can see here, it makes a bunch of noise. But if you take a look at the slits right here, you see the slit? Yep, you see that? It's not secure and it won't ever be secure. So the slits that you see in there, I believe caused a bunch of injury and deaths, if I remember, because they were pulled from the market because it's, it's so dangerous them getting it caught in here. Now these are supposed to be uh, exits for urine to go into when they start spinning. It's supposed to leave the wheel and go out that way. Mm, it's terrible. Also, it's supposed to be easy to detach. And so that's also another reason why this design is so crappy is because it's, it's just so flawed. And if you see the width of it too, you see that width there? Syrians are so pudgy. They're not gonna fit that either. So it's, it's such a bad wheel, but I, I'm definitely gonna be recycling this along with the metals and the plastic and all that stuff. It's just, it's not needed. But why did they have these two outdated enclosures? The Habit Trail system. I believe you can still find this on Amazon. And I have seen people try to sell these boxes on Craigslist. I've seen so many living world Habit Trails, like there's the Ladybug one, there's the Circus one, there's the race car one, which is not Tiny Tails race car, it's a different race car. And I've been itching and dying to get some of these, but also gotta realize that that costs money. So I really gotta be careful about my money and where to put it because when I invest in buying an enclosure like this, I'm gonna be returning it for my refund and my money because I want to review and then I hate it and then I send back. <laughs> so you will be seeing probably the next cage review be something similar to this. I am definitely looking this up now. Uh, it did not come with the wheel, by the way. I couldn't actually show you the wheel in here, but trust me when I say this is absolute garbage and oh wait, there's a sticker. Oh my gosh, where did they get this from? It must've been a mom and pop store, but there's a sticker right here or maybe it was from from the Goodwill. Oh no, I really hope not. $7.99 this cage was. Oh my gosh, they went cheap. They went cheap. If this cage was $7.99 to begin with, they were like, hey, I want an animal, but I want it cheap. <gasps> no. Some information about Mary and Pippin. So we were able to sex Mary uh, before she came in our rescue because she walked on her hands. She was so nice. Mary is expected to be possibly under a year old or around a year old. Uh, she's very sweet in nature, very calm of a hamster. She has the traditional Roboroski coloration with the white eyebrows and we love her so much. And so she was confirmed to be a female 
female. And then for Pippin, he is the most scaredest thing I have ever met. Oh my gosh, for a robo that is. I thought Hannibal was bad, but no, Pippin. Pippin is pretty bad. Pippin is scared of broccoli. Oh my gosh, he is terrified. He is terrified of anything new. He would sleep with Mary together. It was the cutest thing. And a volunteer actually named them Mary and Pippin, which was great because I actually had those names on my sheet of hamsters to name. So this was the perfect situation to have Pippin and Mary because they're from Lord of the Rings. If anybody's wondering, why does that name sound familiar? Lord of the Rings. There you go. And we thought Mary and Pippin was the cutest female duo ever. When I brought them home and put them in and gave them a day to just relax, do their thing because they were kind of nervous about their new environment, I noticed something. Pippin was running on the wheel one night and Pippin, by the way, looks to be about a year or older. So we are estimating he is over a year old just because of the way he looks. But anyways, Pippin was on the wheel and we found out Pippin is not a female. He's a male. We have a female male pairing. So I immediately separated Mary. Poor freaking Mary. So now we are going to be on hamster watch because their gestation period is 22 to 30 days and I have to wait till November 30th to even see if Mary is going to be giving birth to litter of pups and I really hope not because I don't want more hamsters in the rescue. I don't want to be caring for these poor hamsters which we do not know if they are actually around the same age if they're in this we don't we, we what what how long were these guys together for did they just happen to put them I just don't know guys so let's make this clear we were given two cages because we thought they were being housed separate but we were given them both in a box together so maybe they were actually together they got along very well they didn't seem like they were fighting but one's a boy and one's a girl we don't know if these people got them from a pet store or were misinformed or if they were intentionally breeding them and they were a breeding pair. So the volunteer wanted to ask a few more questions and I don't exactly know the conversation, but I do understand that when the volunteer had some questions and was asking them after they did the surrender to us, they did not respond back. So it made it seem a little shady, but at the same time, when you give up an animal, you might not want to hear any more information about the animal because you didn't put your heart and soul into it, which kind of seems like this was one of those cases where they might not have put their heart and soul into caring for these animals because as you see here there is no hides there is absolutely no hides in here the only things you see are tunnels and just hamster food and just just nothing and we did get food but we didn't get any chew toys and it just this does seem very neglectful if it was intentional or not. Unfortunately, this is a pet store hamster puts so much stress on the mother and the pup itself. If they are inbred, that's a really bad thing. If they're too close in genetics, that's a bad thing for the pups. For the mother, if she goes through pregnancy and her body can't handle it, you could accidentally kill the mother. That's why I tell people don't intentionally breed pet store hamsters because they are not qualified to be bred. The breeding meals, even though they do skip a bunch and cut corners, they at least have breeding guidelines for or selective hamsters to make sure that these hamsters are breeding what they want. They are checking to make sure they are okay because they are their supply. That's why they put a lot of time and effort into breeding them. They don't care so much so about the pups because they're just gonna sell them and they can produce more. But the mothers and the fathers that go into producing these, they do happen to focus on. But for ethical breeders, they really focus to make sure the mother and the father are in good health to pass down these genetics to their pups, their offspring, to keep a healthy bloodline. They care so much. So if you are taking an unhealthy pup from a pet store with unknown genetics or poor genetics and breeding it, it is bad. I will make a video about this because it gets so rubbed about this, but we are very scared. So if she does happen to have a bulging belly, we will know. It's very obvious when it comes to pregnancies and hamsters. When their belly starts to bulge, you can tell. We have probably about 20 days left, I wanna say, uh, roughly, of just waiting and hoping that she's not pregnant. So unfortunately, Pippin is scared and by himself now and he has no one else to comfort 
him, which is unfortunate, but we had to do it. And Mary is by herself, and now she's not crawling on her hands, but it could be one, she has instincts to protect herself and her young if she is indeed pregnant, or two, she doesn't have the comfort of her partner, so she's still trying to trust us, even though she did trust us in the beginning, it was walking on her hands, being very friendly. She might not trust us now because she's now alone. So we're gonna be working with them both. They are both in quarantine. And I hope you enjoyed today's video, even though it is scaring me. If you wanna follow along, follow along on Instagram for their updates. You'll see them there. You might not see an update video from us, but check out Instagram. It should be there. So thanks guys so much. If you like the video and like what we do here by rescuing, fostering, and then adopting these guys out, hit like to show your support. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to say anything about today's video and subscribe if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family. So thanks everybody and I'll see you in the next video and thank you again so much for watching. Bye-bye!